Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. It's another week in Mexico, and with it comes some brand new cars for us to unlock. Before we get into any of the new cars, if you missed the video that I made on this thing, the Hot Wheels 2 Jet Z, where I opened 400 wheel spins, you should go and check that out, because it was pain. Today in the festival playlist... That's a funny car to put in the festival playlist, isn't it? Welcome back to another episode of Nick Spends 400 Wheel Spins to get a car one day early. Moving on, off to the Forchathon shop, you can get a Pagani and a Koenigsegg, or you can probably spin the wheel 500 times. I'm gonna buy another one. Hot Wheels Monster Truck Car Horn. Yoink! This week, the car pass for FH5. This is the 2021 Aston Martin DBX. It's got an awesome twin turbo V8 from the Mercedes AMGs. We are not doing it for Papa Fernando. This is for Papa Stroll today. Before we get into any FH5 customization, let's try this thing out bone stock and see what it's got. Right out of the gate, for those of you who don't know, this Aston Martin DBX is Aston Martin's first ever all-wheel drive car. They've never made an all-wheel drive car in their 110 years of existing as a company. And they've also never made an SUV. So I was thinking, instead of taking the DBX to a race circuit, we should take it to an off-road race circuit. As per usual, this wouldn't be an AR12 video without any fun facts about the big beastly Aston Martin DBX. If I was driving most SUVs, I would be starting this video by saying, ugh, an SUV, how boring, how plebish. I don't know if it's just me, but there's something very, very special about the DBX. As SUVs go, this is probably my favorite styled one out there. Not only does it have one of the biggest Aston Martin badges ever fitted to a car, it's got a massive front grille. I love the hood vents. I feel like those fit so well. It's got car door handles stolen from my old Nissan GTR, so the body's all smooth and stylish. It's got a really nice real vent behind the front wheel there for air to go through. I think that looks really good as well. I think this is one of the best looking SUVs ever made. That's where the good of the DBX kind of ends. I was actually searching these up earlier today on Auto Trader to see how much they cost. One of these today cost 250 to 270,000 bucks here in Canada, making it one of the most expensive SUVs you can buy. If you want like an Audi RS Q8, arguably also a really cool SUV, That'll run you a hundred thousand bucks less. And one of those, the Land Rover Defender, a V8 version of those, fully specced, 130k. In what universe is the DBX a good value buy? Not to mention, Aston Martin is also, um, stingy. That infotainment screen... Yeah, that's from a Mercedes. And, and it's not a new Mercedes. That's the old Mercedes infotainment screen. Except Aston Martin's changed the font and replaced the Mercedes logos with Aston Martin ones. Aston Martin will also sell you an optional upgrade for the Aston Martin DBX for your dog. How much do you think an Aston Martin dog bed costs? This isn't a joke. For 3,000 pounds. Yeah, that's like five grand Canadian. <laughs> Not to mention, if you do buy an Aston Martin DBX for 270,000 or whatever, in a year, it's gonna be worth half that because Aston Martin's devalue faster than Bitcoin. Ooh, that's gonna trigger some people. If I was Jeff Bezos, I would have one of these. We did get clapped by a Mini, a Maserati, and an electric Jag. I think it's safe to say we're gonna need to do some customization. Now we look like Aston Martin's usual customer. We can definitely do some customization to this thing. I think I wanna get this thing top of A-Class and keep it as an off-roader. Engine swaps for our big bad DBX. I'll rev them all up. Let's see what we've got.
Lamborghini V10, DBS V12, Valhalla V6. Wait, now Twitch chat says it's the DB11 engine? I have no idea. It's an Aston Martin engine. That's all you need to know. So you know what? I guess we'll go with it. We can always change it if it doesn't fit what we're doing. I was told earlier that our rear wing is memes. So what does that mean? Okay. Really? How does that fit the car in any way? Tires? We definitely want some off-roady tires so we can go to rally tires. That brings our PI down, gives us a lot more grip. I think I kind of want to turn this thing into a hardcore off-road kind of monster. So let's go off-road race tire. These are the rims that I toss on a whole bunch of my off-road cars. I don't know why, but I feel like they just look good. Then we've got some engine spacers, which, um are actually pretty good. Yo, those actually make it a chunky boy. Definitely get some better brakes. That's going to be worth it. No, no. What is this last one going to be? No! I don't know what Forza's obsession is with ruining cars that people would use for like drifting. Did somebody just say, why are you trying to drift it? It's an SUV. I thought Forza Horizon 5 was a game that celebrated customizing cars, doing what's not possible in real life. Like, swapping a Valhalla engine into a DBX. And then people are gonna tell me that putting drift suspension on is unrealistic? No. We're definitely gonna want some 165, so front anti-roll bar, rear anti-roll bar, and a weight reduction. Bone stock, we weigh 5,000 pounds with weight reduction, we remove an American. All right, moving on, off to the horsepower. I think I accidentally made the Aston Martin DBX 707. I didn't actually know this was a thing when I made my video yesterday, but take a look at this. There is a brand new slider in FH5. Say you go in and you make a paint for one of your cars and you place some decals on the side. Now you can press the start button and change the vinyl material from matte to gloss. So look at my car. My car is still glossy, but my vinyl is matte, which is really cool. A guy named Equinox discovered this the other day. If you decide to make your car chrome, there we go. We now fit into the London car owner scene. Once you painted your car chrome, go over to apply a decal, then go and apply your decal. Then what you want to do, change your vinyl material, to matte, and then you want to change your vinyl color to black. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Vanta black is finally a thing in Forza Horizon 5 again. Obviously, I couldn't paint all of our carbon fiber or like our black trim and stuff, but it does look pretty cool. Our fully matte black Aston Martin. There is the off-road wide body kit that I wanted for this thing on the Range Rover. That looks so cool. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here in a matte black car that people won't even be able to see. Anyways, once we get off-road, that's where our tires are gonna start to shine. So let's see what we've got when we start getting through some of these twisties. That's better than I thought it would be. Uh, gears? I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this engine. It feels like it kind of lacks horsepower down low. I mean, it's kind of cool. My car is also becoming less matte black by the second. Now that we get back onto the road, this is where I'm going to struggle again. Yup, 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 yup. Until we get off-road, finally get grip. I thought this thing was going to be rapid in A-Class. I don't know if it's just this engine swap, but it just, it's a bit slow. If you were buying this IRL for 250k, I'd be a bit disappointed. Don't get me wrong, it's a really nice car to drive. It's really smooth. It's really stable, but it's not fast. It's a good car. It's just nowhere near as quick as you would think it would be, especially with 700 horsepower. It's good, but it's Kinda not good enough. Maybe I'll try an on-road version and see what that's like. Twitch chat's already saying this thing on-road is gonna be trash. If we toss on the ugliest rear wing in history and swap an Aston Martin Valhalla engine into it. What is nice about the Valhalla engine is it is only a three liter engine, so it's super lightweight. So we save, what, 1,400 pounds over stock, which is really good. I mean, I can try full slick 
slick tires, but I am going to be down on horsepower compared to what I could have had. I guess let's give it a... I mean, we've got the aero and we've got the front splitter. I mean, I might as well. Okay. 3,600 pounds, so we're lightweight. 1,000 horsepower, so we've got all the burr. And we've got full slicks as wide as they can go and the ugliest rear wing in history. Let's be real. Forza has let the drifters down on this game. Releasing SUVs without drift suspension but having the drift transmission as an option. Not to forget the fact we can't beat or scores from season one because they reduced the scoring. There's 7,000 languages in the world and Mika chose to speak facts. I've also just realized another disappointing thing with the DVX. The devs decided to give me the ugliest rear wing ever in Forza Horizon 5 and a pokey boy front splitter. You know what the developers forgot to give me? Lights would have been... Nice. This thing has to do well in S1 class, right? Right? Please tell me. That engine sounds insane. I'm not used to the Valhalla engine, but that's so... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Look at the grip this thing has now. It actually gets a little bit of oversteer in the corners, if anything. But boy, it's nice. Oh, there's the understeer going into the corner. And a little tiny bit of oversteer when you're in the actual corner. It's a it's a big, powerful boy. What can I say? Man, it's a bit of a death trap, honestly. It's one of those cars where you're like kind of holding on and trying not to crash. See what I mean? It's absolutely rapid with a thousand horsepower and all-wheel drive and grippy tires that is until... Those grippy tires say no you. We're no longer grippy. Yeah, I think row, row, row your boat is probably a good theme song for this car. It understeers going into the corner, and then as soon as you get into the corner, it goes, oh yeah, I've got a thousand horsepower. Let's slide. It's a little disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. Once again, the DBX is just not good enough. It's too big, it's too heavy. And I get it that it's an SUV, but we removed 1,400 pounds out of the thing. And it's still not good enough. There's not even any incentive to max upgrade this car because the only thing that I could do is toss more horsepower in this car, which means it would be more slidey in the corners. And now I'm about to go and embarrass myself to try to drift a car with no drift suspension. The only thing I'm gonna be able to do is get rally suspension on this thing and kind of hope. Pfft. Why would you ever want to put a drift transmission on an SUV? Pfft. Probably to not go with your drift suspension, that's for sure. Maybe taking the DBX over here to some little switchbacks, that could be kind of fun. 200,000 points, personal best. I would like to apologize for what you're about to see because this is going to be absolutely embarrassing. My personal best is 200,000 points on this zone. I would imagine I'm not even gonna crack 160. Nope, never mind. I've already spun because I don't have drift suspension. I I, I don't know what to say. Uh. <sighs> okay, I see a lot of people in Twitch chat asking me to do the volcano drift zone. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. Here we go. Here we go. Congratulations, that was more fun than drifting this car.